In the last episode, we explained how the GCP Global Load Balancer is able to overflow traffic to backend instance groups in the next closest region during traffic spikes. Not only is this more reliable for Beyond Treat's growing online business, but it also gives dog parents a better overall experience with lower overall latency risks. But the Beyond Treat leadership is hesitant, and they want to save cost in as many places as possible. They have a new claim to fame after being featured on TV and are new to serving online customers around the world. Will global load balancing give them a noticeable difference in performance versus regional? Today, we're going to find that out. What we'll be creating today is a simple test web server running a CPU-intensive application that computes Mandelbrot sets. What are Mandelbrot sets? A Mandelbrot set is generated by computational iteration, which means to repeat a process over and over again. And that will be a Python script we install on our load test instances. Huh, OK, I'm intrigued. We'll then measure network capacity using load testing tools on one VM instance. Next, we'll add a single region load balancer with backends in the same region, and then measure the response time. And then let me guess, after that, we will test the performance when we scale the network to multiple regions using global load balancing, and then compare that with the performance using a single regional load balancer. Yes, ding, 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 exactly. Awesome. I am super excited. Let's do it. Let's go through the ingredients. Yes, here they are. You'll need load testing tools like Siege and HTTPerf. Siege simulates requests from a specified number of users so you can see the capacity and expected response times for an application. HTTPerf sends a specific number of requests per second, regardless of whether responses or errors are received. It tells you how applications respond to load. You also need a single virtual machine instance backend, a single region load balancer, and a single region managed instance group. And finally, a global load balancer with multi-regional managed instance groups. To start, create a VPC network for testing, then define a firewall rule to allow internal traffic and allow SSH traffic to the VPC. Now let's determine the serving capacity of a single VM instance. Create a VM called Web Server with four CPUs. Include a startup script that installs the Mandelbrot server. Create a firewall rule to allow external access to it, and then grab the VM public IP address. Enter it in your browser, and you get the computed Mandelbrot set. Then create a second VM in the same zone called load test. Next, SSH into the load test instance and install Sage and HTTPerf. And try a request to run 20 requests from four parallel users. You should get an output of about 5.05 requests per second. Using HTTPerf, run 500 requests at the rate of four requests per second and repeat it at different rates, like five, seven, and 10 requests per second you will see that the system can handle five requests per second and then drastically jumps in response time and connection errors when you have seven or 10 connections per second. OK, now let's put a single region load balancer in front with the managed instance group in the same region. Once you create the HTTPS load balancer with three VMs in the same region using a managed instance template and health checks, you can run the same load tests against the load balance system. As the load increases past serving capacity, the average and maximum request latency increases sharply. With 10 requests per second, the average request latency is close to 500 milliseconds. But with 20 requests per second, the latency is 5,000 requests per second. It's a tenfold increase. Your dog fans are not going to be happy when you have a flash buy one, get one free sale on dog birthday cakes. Now here's the real test. Let's set up a global web server with HTTPS load balancing with backends deployed in multiple regions. Once you create a managed instance group in a second region with a maximum capacity of 10 RPS, run 500 requests at 10 RPS, and you will get the results. After the system stabilizes, the average response time is around 400 milliseconds at 10 RPS and a minor increase to 700 milliseconds at 20 RPS. Seems like the discrepancy is a lot less than the 5,000 milliseconds delay we saw with the regional load balancer. 
In our regional load balancer test, we saw the load balancer became overloaded when traffic increased past capacity. This is what tends to happen with typical on-premise load balancers or when using the standard tier network on regional HTTPS load balancers. The request latencies increase by more than 10x. Meanwhile, using the global HTTPS load balancing setup lets your traffic overflow to the next closest region with available serving capacity. You have lower increase in end user latency and a better user experience, meaning? Beyond Treats customers will still be able to order pumpkin pie, flask biscuits, peanut butter treats, and carrot cakes on National Dog Day. No full service outages when traffic spikes. For more information about GCP's global load balancing optimizing application latency, check out the documentation in the link below. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Here's hoping you are whipping up your own capacity management with cloud load balancers. If you like this video and would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.